Okay, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is June 18th, 2014. This is uh, uh, Teachers Teaching Teachers 400, um, and I am delighted to not celebrate it, um, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people, I, I, we, I, we may at some point, but um, we're just moving on and uh, doing some planning tonight. Uh, Jake and Christy are with us tonight, and um, this is very much um, exactly like how, like how, like that. Um, <laughs> um, to, uh, teachers, teaching te teachers started um, it, before Skype was video, believe it or not. Um, uh, some teachers uh, got together and planned curriculum together. Um, a few of us did, uh, mainly around youth voices. But um, but other things too, and um, eventually we we said you know this new thing is coming out. Why don't we have the developer come on and talk to us? Or did you read this article? Why don't we have the author of that come on and talk to us? So the show evolved from there, um, and you can figure out how many years that's been. If you we've been doing this almost every week, um, and we're up to show 400. So welcome Christy Kingham and Jake Jacobs. Um, two people I am right now working the closest with um, this summer, and um, so we're going to do some planning in front of everybody. This is mm -hmm. like uh, um, I, I was trying to I never I never said this to you, Christy, but I was going to say this is like sort of like a um, glass bowl in some way where others can sure. watch, and jump in. Mm -hmm. um, if you're listening to this somewhere and you want to find out more and uh, Join us. It, you can find the link to join us at edtechtalk.com slash ttt, um, or just go to edtechtalk.com and hit the live button. And there is a link there that should allow you to come in right here and say, what are you guys talking about, um, or whatever mm -hmm. you'd like to say. So, um, but let's do brief introductions if we can. Christy, do you want to start us off? Tell sure. us who um, you are. And <laughs> I think you may have been on the show a while ago, I'm not sure, but I feels like I don't first. think. It, yes, um, okay. I'm usually in the dregs of SAT tutoring on Wednesday nights, so I'm happy that that's over for now. Um, <laughs> but uh, my name is Christy Kingham. I'm a teacher at Young Women's Leadership School in Astoria. I teach 11th grade ELA, and I'm an instructional coach. Um, and this summer will be my first time co-facilitating with Paul Allison, um, the Youth Voices program for students and teachers. Um, I've been working with the writing project for three years, every summer as a coach. How long have you been 11th grade teaching? This is my third year teaching 11th grade. And it was 6th um, grade before the 6th and 7th? Yeah, 6th and 7th for eight years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Jake and I so, teach 6th and 7th graders now. So love those guys. That's why I asked that. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I love them. I, I Last year I taught both 6th grade and 11th grade. I taught a 6th grade health class as my elective to pitch in for a year um, and, uh, and 11th grader. So it was an interesting spread. Mm. Cool. But yeah, no, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, great. Um, and Jake, your introductions. Yeah, I'm the uh, art teacher at uh, New Directions Secondary School where, where you also teach. <laughs> uh, we're over age... Um, Overage kids, um, phasing in from sixth grade um, and seventh this year to eighth next year, and all the way up to twelfth. Um, um, and we're uh, excited. I'm excited to to finally be teaching online uh, this summer, even if it's only a couple of kids, and we and we build slow, but um, uh, to have them connect uh, at home and understand that you could get, you know. Credit for what you do, uh, almost any time, especially in art. <laughs> and so um, it's just kind of uh, in the offing now, and hopefully we can slap it together uh, for for ASAP this summer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, makes me think, and I, I really want to bring this up um, anyhow. So I'll just say it right away. There's a there's a new report out from the Aspen Institute called mm -hmm. Learning. And the internet, I think, or no, it's not. It's called Learner at the Center yeah. of the Network World. And one of their phrases is um, something we're kind of familiar with, which you almost said there, Jake, learning anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. um, but, but interestingly, they've added throughout the report, I've noticed, I've only read the first chapter so far, but um, they've added um, at any pace. 
which which I think is quite interesting. Um, and worth mentioning that both of our schools are part of a, a pilot, a network of schools in New York City called the Asynchronous Mastery Based uh, Pilot. I think that's close to what it's called. That's, yeah, that sounds yeah. better. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and, and I think a large part of what that means is that our curriculum is available online and there's access to it. And, you know, who knows? We can and talk student, about it. Well, I think like at the core mm -hmm. of it is that we're trying to find ways to have students work at their own pace and not be confined by um, time and place, you know, just like Jake was talking about with being able to have kids work online or at home. Um, so if a student misses two weeks of school, it doesn't mean that they're going to fail your course. Mm -hmm. And or right. if they if they work faster and, and reach mastery at certain right. things, they, they ought to be able to do that too. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jake? I was going to say, like, um, you know, it's not, uh, if people are listening to this and it sounds weird, it's not just, um, you know, the, the kid always messing up. Sometimes they move around and sometimes they have to take care of their <laughs> siblings and there's all different reasons. And so... If we really don't judge, if we just teach and we help them make up time, uh, you know, any way that they can, then, you know, there's a definite need for that. And when we were at the uh, transfer school conference, Chancellor Farinha said that uh, she would like to see transfer schools ex expand more into um, middle schools, more mi more middle school transfer schools. So that's what we do, and. Um, you know, hopefully a lot of the online stuff that we can get off the ground can be repurposed and so other schools don't have to reinvent the wheel so much. Right. So having said all of that, um, Christy and I are going to be working with real people in the room <laughs> um, mm -hmm. this summer. Um, we've um, – it's – Last year we did the same, um, I don't know, it won't be the same, but a similar project, um, and we keep it a real simple title called the Youth Voices Summer Program. Um, and last year we had 13, and we're looking toward having somewhere between 15 and 20, it looks like at this point, um, students and five or six teachers all working together um, at Lehman College. Uh, uh, and and I, I got referring to the report again. One of the central points of it, and I'm, uh, is is to put students at the center again. Not a brand new idea, but it to put students at the center of a networked world um, is is a, a newer idea. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's the heart of what we want the summer program to be. Um, so. And I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I do want to get down to planning here in a second. But we – so let's talk about how we start. Um, I mean, we really do start with students' questions, um, their passions, their issues. And what's great about working with Christy for me is that I can tell her how we've done it, and she can tell me how she does it and, um, you know, and has done it in the past or whatever. Um, Christy, are you sharing that something with us, or? I'm um, sorry, didn't mean to. No, click don't that. worry. <laughs> so I was um, trying to pull something up. So why don't we why don't we start with that? How do we? I mean, let's let's assume that we all agree that at least in the summertime, <laughs> we can experiment and play with um, starting with students' passions, their curiosities might be an easier word to deal with. Uh, you know, um, at least their interests. Um, teasing those out as quickly as we can, and then um, building projects around whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, so, any thoughts about that idea, starting that way? Or um, are you talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> Either or. You or um, Jake or anybody who wants yeah. to answer. Um, so, I guess, I guess one of the one of the things I would want to do is, um, I, like you and I have talked about before, having them jump right in and get familiar with all of the technology that we have. Um, and that, and by technology, that means the, both platform and some of the apps and um, different like areas we might want them to go to and badges and everything. And so I just, um, in thinking about how to get them on a path 
list of something that they're interested in um, and do the, the like technology piece at the same time, right? That's kind of what we have to do the first couple of days of this. Yeah, I mean, you bring up an interesting issue, like, are we determining the technology or are they? So, mm -hmm. but, yeah. 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 And are we, or do we want to make sure we just have, like, in the classroom, I would have, um, you know, all of the, the various technologies um, linked, available with, like, mi you know, mini lessons online about how to use them or tutorials or whatever, um, so that if a kid knows they want to do X, they just can go to this place and try it. And so that's already set up. So, like, the tools are all there for the kids, and, and we're doing more of the, like, getting them brainstorming about the content stuff, and then, like, coaching in to, to work with them on technology on an individual basis. So, I, but that, that's just what I would do in the classroom. Um, so I, I don't know how that transfers to what we're doing yet, mm -hmm. but I might by the end of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I could jump in. Go ahead, Jake. Mm -hmm. um, that what you guys discussed, and uh, it seems as though you're you're just fleshing it out right now. But that's like almost exactly how I built um, the art course, uh, the six week art uh, online course. Um, even though it's not so, in person, it was it was. Is uh, this, is, Jake, I just your email it suggested it was longer than six weeks. Are you thinking of making it six weeks? Or? No, there's there's six weeks all all uh, mapped out already. <laughs> Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what we had to do when when we when we built the courses, um, okay. and the the very first um, you know activity uh, since this is online and you're not there in person with, is um, having the other having the student list all the ways that they can possibly communicate, and then you kind of turn it around and surprise them and say, well, guess what? You know, we can use all of those methods, and you know, just on a smartphone alone nowadays. You could have, you know, so many different apps, um, you know, from Instagram to Twitter to TitanPad to, um, you, you know, voice, uh, Google Voice or, you know, any kind of um, conference calling. Um, you, could, you could Google Plus, you could Skype, you know, on, on those devices. And then, um, you know, also it's better if you have access to a laptop or a desktop computer, um, you know, but, uh, but a lot of kids will only just have that smartphone. So... You know, it's it's extending w what happens in school, and you know the great thing about not having to worry about all the, you know, privacy issues and uh, you know parental consent and all that is that they're doing that all on their own time. So if they're connecting, then you know, then their parents are really answering those questions in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to get into whether or not you should get consent anyhow, but <laughs> let's just say that for the summer program we would have consent. Blank, blanket consent is best. Blanket. <laughs> we'll get consent. But but I love the idea of them listing list I mean that's a nice idea mm -hmm. all the ways you communicate. Um, well that's the first that's the first activity, even though it's a, a visual art uh, course, that's the first thing I want to do is I want to get as many contact points as possible because you know if a kid's failing in one area you know, they might like taking Instagram pictures and then, you know, giving them the the idea that they can actually get credit for that if they do it in meaningful ways, you know, that that will probably be unexpected to them. And so, you know, that's the beauty of the course because, you know, technology can really change the way we, we've seen school before and, uh, you know, our kids have, have definitely had struggles. They've, you know, they've been looking for ways to have success. So, you know, there's a lot of offers there. Mm -hmm. So, just to say, um, one of the things that we have traditionally, and, and if you go to youthvoices.net slash questions, it lays out some of the uh, theory behind it. James A. Bean, I don't even know if I have his name on there, but um, has this described in a book called Democratic Education. Um, but uh, it's similar in that it's a list of all the ways, but this is a list of all your questions, questions about yourself, questions about the world. Um, mm -hmm. That's how he divides it up. Um, which I think, I think both. So I, I, I've often felt 
Look, we have 12 days in the summer, right? <laughs> is that, yeah, it is what it is. So there's only so much we can do, and we are the New York City Writing Project, but at the same time, I would like to blow out and say, you know, how, what are all the different ways you communicate? Deal with different kinds of media, but also make really clear that um, we want them to have a, a content that they choose themselves in some way. Any thoughts about all of that, um, Christy? Um, yeah, uh, there are so many thoughts <laughs> in very divergent directions. And anytime I say the word divergent now, I think about that book and the movie. Um, <laughs> which is, hmm. I don't know if you've seen them, but I read all of them and saw the movie. Um, anyway, um, I <laughs> I think. Um, I think I just keep going back to like I, I do. I, we should probably do a little bit of backwards planning, actually. But I just keep going yeah. back to like what the beginning needs to be is. And we talked about this with six word memoirs. I don't know if you want to talk about that now, but um, the mm -hmm. beginning. It's a new community of students and teachers together, um, and making sure we have some time uh, to get to know each other a little bit, um, both online and in person, um, to make quick connections that first day or two. And they will have met each other prior, but it won't be until we're really in the room that I think that'll happen in a super meaningful way. Yeah. Um, so that's just like my thoughts about the first couple of days, but I think we do need to consider what is our end game, and is there an end game, or what are our like end games, you know? What are the few kind of like checkpoints we have in mind? Um, not to use a really teachery word, but... Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I think mean, if we think about that, then I then I have like the, a better way of way into to what we're gonna do. Well, do you want to say more about what you think the checkpoint might be? Or? <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, okay, well, I'm okay. not, I mean, in terms of what I've seen from last year, I don't because um, yeah. it seems like there and, there are different. And the, the whole agendas from last year are up at youthvoices.net slash uh, summer twenty thirteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love, I, Paul. I would love just like off the cuff to hear you say what you yeah. like, what you hope kids would get but out of it, here's, like product but, wise. Or do they need a product? And that's a fine answer too, obviously. Yeah, I think they do need a product. I, I'll say that. Um, and um, I a lot of this goes back, and and I think it's there are a couple. Before I say that, I wanted to throw in the pot that. Um, we're going to be dealing with video um, pretty fast, and so mm -hmm. we should be throwing that in the mix of our early planning, too. Um, and, but um, if I remember my four weeks, right, um, with the New York City Writing Project, which was in 1985, okay, but um, the... Uh, so I don't say the years anymore. I say <laughs> we were right. about, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, but the the as I remember that there it was really important that um, for me as a writer to experience like the whole process in some way a few different times. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think there need to be finished products, um, and then you put and of course maybe it's not finished. But you get to kind of repeat it or or do a similar process again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we're talking about three weeks, then we need to have something, you know. And we're really talking about four days, right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think there ought to be a product at the end of the first and second week, and then the third week be a more open kind of let's see where this has taken us. Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, and I guess if we want, if we're, our purpose is student choice uh, in terms of getting, just getting them to have the time and space to explore things that they're interested in um, in a visual way or in a written way, right? Because it can be either or. Or do we want them to always be doing both? Like, that's another question, too. Yeah. Well, I, I can't forget that we are the New York City Writing Project, right? Right, that's why I said that. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. So, um, 
but having, I mean, yeah, but that's not the real reason. The real reason but is writing. that, Sorry, that writing is, is amazing, right? It's an amazing tool. Um, and even though Jake is a visual guy, he'll step in and <laughs> extra something else here. But, but, you know, there are things you can, so let's just say, there are things you can do with writing that you can't do with visuals, and there are things that you can do with visual that you can't do with writing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, we want kids to experience both of those things in lots of ways. If there's time, go ahead, Jake. It sounds like you guys have, um, you know, a very short time span, and so, um, you know, you might need like icebreaker after icebreaker to bring them along. Um, if you do, if you do like these quick intros and all these modalities, that's what I call them, like all these different apps and all these different ways of communicating. And then the teacher is able to show like a really short but to the point example of you know how you can um, tell the story you know in all different ways. You could tell a, a mini story like even in Twitter, right? You could you could shorten it to 140 characters as you know mm -hmm. as an exercise because you guys mentioned my mm -hmm. life story in six words, you know, the same type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but e each time you branch out a little further and. You know, if the teacher just says, "Okay, you know, this is what you're expected," like you know, the next one is going to be a uh, you know a blog entry or a comment. The next one's going to be, you know, paragraphs. The next one's going to be um, a voicemail, you know, or you know something that you record. You know, I mean, you know, if you're if you're using those different technologies, but whatever, you know, that's why the the first meeting could be important because whatever the kid says that they're using, you know. The, that then you can kind of hold them to that and say, all right, you know, each each time you meet, you can just check off the list. You know, let's, you know, let's see which one we have access to now, and um, you know, and use them all so that you know by the end you can say, you know, that you you tried looking at all of these different modalities for storytelling, and you know, I guess you want them to tell their story, right? If you if you can get them to open up, that's the that's the end game. <clears throat> so I mean, that you know, that's kind of how. The, the my art course was structured and you know it, it was really thought out because um, it's very new for kids it's gonna be a lot of kids first online course you know and you know and and adults too if they're teaching it because you know it'd definitely be my first I think um, you're just you're making me think a lot about the the larger threads throughout our few weeks and um, communication and storytelling being two of them in the story and story with a capital S like how do you tell the story of the research that you're doing how do you you know how do you tell your story in six words or in a Twitter a twit tweet <laughs> twit right. ah, yep I just sounded really old I, um, <laughs> go ahead Paul I, no no yeah I mean I just don't want to subsume either of those Right, I think they need to kind of step step out. Like story is important and research is important, um, but yeah, um, I think those are important threads. Um, what's that? Yeah, like re researching is, is a. I think you had. Did you have um, this year the kids uh, interviewing a parent so they can get some more background of their own story? Right? Was that was that something that you did? Yeah. So yeah. and 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 with BronxNet, one of the things we're thinking about is using video to kind of tell your story too. So, so let's let's say that is one of our threads is telling your story, right? Mm -hmm. um, whatever that story is, that feels you know it's about identity. It's about you know. And like it's well, yeah. It's and you're, also yeah. How do you tell the story? Yeah, yeah, your lens and or your perspective. Um, and uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'll get back. Well, I'll get it back. <laughs> no, but and and then but then I think it's a very it's I think it's actually for most kids a kind of a different thing to to follow a question where it leads um, in, yeah. and do really hard work of annotation and, and sharing that with other people and. And responding to other texts and so forth like that. I th that's that's an important part of this that I don't that I think well I you know nobody's given up on anything but um, that that I think we have to hold on to because I want to say by starting with self you can get to the academic and if we don't give them the experience of deep kind of academic 
work, um, they won't believe that, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I yeah. just, and it's so, that's so easy for us to speak to because it's how we do anything in our lives, <laughs> right? You have a question, you start looking it up, it leads you from one thing to another, and then you start coming up with your conclusions, and um, I think how we want them to share what they find is where we have some flexibility in terms of, like, it doesn't have to look like academic writing. Um. Necessarily. Well, what's <laughs> academic writing, though? But. Uh, that's exactly. I knew you were going to say that the minute it came out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, but, I'm not in a good way. I just was like, um, I just mean like what they think that how they think they have to write for school. Okay. Um, and and if, and um, I I think what Jake so, was uh, saying about he was just he was basically naming that we could do genre study, and just like throw out a bunch of genres that are that are ways that people communicate things that they discover or whatever. Um, but I really love, sorry, for Jake, I'll let you, yeah. but I, I, I love the idea of um, part of what we are doing is helping them understand that they can write in ways that that they haven't, you know, what you just said. <laughs> that <laughs> it doesn't have to be in ways that you think you have to write right. for school. There right. are other ways to do it. And that's, that's exciting. I like that. Okay. Um, Arig, who was your student in our program last year, um, one of the things she said in her assessment was that um, she thought what we were doing was a combination of a, something I think you do with, with students, and it's mm -hmm. done in, this, in the invitation, I think, um, these, um, this I believe kind of essay. Oh, yeah. And, and a research essay, right? So yeah. if you can, um, and, and I, think that's, I think that's a powerful um, idea. Because I get nervous about the this I believe stuff being um, not grounded enough in mm. in I don't know what else to say in other people's voices mm -hmm. <laughs> that that you know you, that you're bringing other quotes and, and and so forth into it. But so um, well, you just made me think of a, another um, writing assignment I did this year, which was. Uh, so we did. We do this, I believe, essays at the beginning of the year. Um, it's your personal philosophy statement. It's an NPR genre. Then we publish them on NPR. And I don't, if you guys aren't familiar with it, um, whoever's watching this or just us, mm -hmm. three, uh, definitely uh, check check it out because there's yeah. some really good ones. And, and they're read yeah, aloud. And by the way, it's all over youth voices too. They're, they're like yeah. teachers all over doing. It. But, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So anyway, is that the StoryCorps thing? No, but no. StoryCorps I also love and use, do that for, <laughs> I use that for my narrative nonfiction unit uh, as one of my mentor, te like my mentor text kind of things that students use as models. Um, but uh, so anyway, so this I believe was at the beginning of the year, and then we had this year-long study of um, the the traditional canon of high school literature, and they kind of exploded that, and at the and we. Uh, the students came up with their personal philosophy statements about English methodologies and what they think what they think teachers should teach in high school and how that should be taught um, in in terms of reading. Um, and that was after uh, doing book clubs, doing independent reading, doing whole class texts, um, uh, doing plays, et cetera. Um, so uh, I kind of combined. So they had they made a they wrote a personal philosophy statement um, about their um, uh, their opinion about English methods and and so that was a this I believe but in addition to that they had to find outside resources to support um, or to use to refute you know uh, an argument so um, that it's kind of it got layered in a really cool way because it was something they felt really strongly about and they were like hey look there's other people who uh, feel strongly about this as well um, and it sounds like some, something they might not feel strongly about because I made it up. <laughs> but because it was about their reading life, they were super excited to have a say. And um, a sidebar, I will be publishing a book for that as well. Yeah. So I'm excited. Kids' perspective on English education. Anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So that kind of a thing might be cool for them to do too in terms of layering it. Like if you start with a personal philosophy statement about yourself, like what a belief that you have and what from your life or your experiences, your perspective or your lens makes you believe that. And then the next step could be how do you layer that with what other people, how other people feel about it as well, or vice versa. 
Did all that make sense? Sorry, it was a long diagram. No, absolutely it does. <laughs> Jake, okay. do, can you come around to, do you, in your art course, do you um, care what they're creating about? Do you know? I don't mean no. not care. Well, but, I, I mean, well, I let me ask that another way. How do you how do you I get can. them how do you get them not to do like what they they ex what they expect you to ask them to do? You know what I mean? How do you get well, them to really be? Who yeah, they I'm, are? I'm listening to you to you ELA guys or English mm -hmm. people, and yeah. um, you know, it's funny because in your writing, I'm sure that you guys would love to be like you know this you know, freedom writer, you know, teacher, and you walk in and you get them to t tell their story and it's so cathartic, you know, but, um, uh. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I would too in art, you know, I would love to see that in art and, you know, sometimes it happens, um, but, you know, it's a process and most of the time the kids are either just doing what they think you expect them to do, mm -hmm. right, you know, which is just like, all right, following the routine and like, you know, the drudgery of it, um, and then, you know, and then sometimes, you know, something special happens. Like you look at something or you read something and your little eyebrow goes up, you know, because it's different. And, you know, what brings that about is, um, you know, is letting them go. Is, you know, I, I, I believe, you know, in, in like as an artist and, you know, and a teacher, but, you know, conceptually just letting kids go. Like, you know, like fight the power, smash the machine, like to hell with all the standards, you know, and... You know, if, if we do that, what would happen, right? So that we can take a look and see why we do, you know, all, all the standards and all the other stuff. And, um, you know, the, it's it's great to, it's great to, like, attach to standards that do that, like um, the, the ISTE standards, which, you know, uh, it's just all about student-centered learning, critical and creative thinking, um, technology, you know, and it's all, like, written down. It's all, like, official. <laughs> so, you know, I love going there, and, um, you know, with art, you know, like, uh, my, my principal asked me next year if we can make my art offerings a little more, like, um, you know, advisory-based, you know, more like, you know, social emotion, like art therapy, you know, like deal dealing with kids, like, really where they are. So I've been thinking about that for next fall. And um, yeah, you know, well, there, there's a lot of great stuff that that um, I learned in the in developing the online course, because you know when you're using video with kids, some kids are not going to want to appear on the video, you know, and so you have to come up with some kind of like avatar or like some hand puppet or something, or just like you know filming them as they draw or filming them as they write, and you just hear their voice, so that they'll feel more comfortable, you know, and then just as you know, tape rolls, you end up sometimes getting these, like, other voices that come, you know, and sometimes the kid is assuming somebody else's voice, you know. Like, they might be talking through, you know, somebody that they admire, or they might be talking through, you know, like, that little, remember from The Shining, that little, like, psycho kid Hi. with a little thing, <laughs> you know, and, um, <laughs> yeah, because, like, you know, baby so, voice, how, ma how many times, how many times has a kid you know, just had a meltdown and ended up, you know, uh, you know, acting like a younger kid, you know, all those, all those moments are, are so revealing, you know, in the classroom, and, you know, if you're, if you're videoing or audioing that, you know, and the kid doesn't have to be, like, identified, it could be very, you know, interesting to look back at, and for the kid to, to realize, like, wow, I did that, you know, and then, you know, maybe, maybe you delete it after that, but, you know, to get the value out of it, and then try to convert that into, you know, whatever the day's assignment is, written or, or, or otherwise. I, yeah, I, um, sorry, Paul, were you about to say something? I, I can, I can oh, okay. begin. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, you just, you're just making me think about, um, like, so what works in my classroom is the amount of choice that I give um, students in terms of, like, ways into assignments, um, but because of some of the things that I do, since I teach 11th grade, like there are some thing, things that I need to do to get them ready for other things, right, um, that I'm just sort of tied to. And um, I think maybe this summer is an opportunity to not be tied to any of that because <laughs> um, I have, a, you know, a million ideas that I can't bring to fruition because I don't have 
the time and space to, especially because I teach 11th grade. Um, so, and being in a mastery-based school, like we are, we're, we design around skills. We have project-based mindset. Um, so uh, that's kind of where my head's at. But some, but I'm constricted. I do have the regents in my year. I have them write the college essay in my year. You know, all that stuff. So I just, just hearing you say that makes me excited, Paul, for us to like not have to do that stuff as much. But I do think it's important for us to have some structures. Um, available to them. <laughs> well, the, stru the structures can be the, the technologies that you use and the fact that each person is doing like a quantified amount, you know, of, yeah. of seat time work, you know, but if it starts out like really, really super simple, you know, the kids get this idea in their mind like, wow, this is going to be great, I'm really going to, you know, it's going to be easy, you know, and then you just scaffold things, you know, and get as much, eventually as much as you can, you know, out of the kids, but, um, you know, to, to start to just start start out on 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 the foot where, you know, you're you're letting the the kid dictate the content, ho hopefully, and that you're you're getting them familiar and comfortable with the tools as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. All right. So that so, <laughs> and this and this was confirmed last summer that a lot of people, the teachers and the students, said that time felt very different in the summer, and I think we experienced that. Um, you know, that um, even though if you break it down, we're only there from, what, 9 to 1? Um, but we had a lot of kids coming early We had a, and just wanting to work. And, um, and, and so, but, but even, even if you say to people, you, okay, you have from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock just to do whatever you want to do, that's, like, surprising to people. And mm -hmm. so we have that kind of... Um, flexibility in the summer and we should do that as much as we can. Um, there was another thought though. No, I'll think of it again. Oh, well, well, let me, the, the maybe more prosaic but worth identifying. Um, I think there are probably five and there may be more, but, and this goes back to um, multi-literacies kinds of work from many years ago, but um, that we want kids to work with text video, audio, image, and I think all four of those are different, and I would add code um, to that. Oh, right. Yes. Um, so, uh, is there anything else? Is that, do you think that covers the universe of uh, communication? Um, what did you say, text? I said text, text video, audio, everything. image, code. <laughs> Text, to co text can be everything. <laughs> with text a capital is a, T. No, nah, nah, but no, nah, I don't. <laughs> see, you know what? I don't. Uh, personally, I don't like playing with words. That way. I'm, just, I, I'm just. I know. Text is words. Okay. What is academic? Text is writing. writing text text is writing, writing and reading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I think it gets confusing when you do that. But yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. But. <laughs> but you, but so, a painting yeah. could be considered a text, or a photo could be considered a text because you can read it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And we, we don't have to go there. Sorry. Okay. Can we, we come we, back from there? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, we're gonna I mean, have to. For, we, um, we are still talking about painting, and we are, you know, images yes. into it, right? So, yes, yes, exactly. If, you if said we image. don't consider if we don't consider images text, then I'm not sure how I can squeeze okay. my learning competencies into uh, into art. <laughs> okay, so I I consider I consider all these things text, right? So we can move off the word text and say reading okay. and writing. Yes. <laughs> right, okay. reading and writing. <laughs> okay, video, Thank audio, you. image, and code. <laughs> Um, I, don't, I don't mean to. Yeah, no, I don't. There is nothing else, right? Do you, if image. But, and and the thing is, do we want? If a kid just wants to do one of those, is that okay? And I I want to challenge and say maybe not, because I I want I want them to play the universe, you know, <laughs> a little more um, and see what's possible. You're thinking. I want, yeah, I would want to yeah. get to know the kids a little bit and and push them safely, mm -hmm. you know, to try things that they maybe are don't get to try, um, and maybe they don't they're not going to be good at it or good at it, and that's okay because it doesn't mm -hmm. matter because it's a summer program and we're just sitting with them, chilling out, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but. But at the same, but I agree with you. I think like they maybe there's like in our minds we want to make sure that they do, you know, a certain amount of each thing. 
Yeah. Right. So sure. And and the other piece I'm remembering that I think is is essential to youth voices, but probably to the to writing project also is conversation, and and um, a really careful use of. Um, uh, feedback's not the right word, but but uh, you know, response to other people, mm -hmm. um, and and so and I think that's what Youth Voices grows upon. It's you know that's how that's how it grows. So that's so hmm. so uh, yeah. Tell tell your story. Um, follow your inquiry. Use these um, modalities, um, but. Also, I think another important theme is um, have conversations with other people about that their work and your work, um, so that so that these products that you're creating are the are well uh, on Youth Voices we call them discussions, right? These are the beginnings of a discussion, um, rather than a something you're publishing. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes, yes. it's, sometimes it's a little stiff to um, to just like force kids to make comments about somebody else's so, you know, somebody else's post or something. Um, but, so may, maybe if they um, maybe if they were structured so that each one ends with a question for somebody else, and the, then they could just tag team, and then you could go through you know all the modalities, you know, just kind of connecting one to the other, like. Um, you know, it's just like a call to action for the next person. And Paul, do you, we make sure that they respond to each other or are they responding to the Youth Voices community in general? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I'm trying to deal with both Jake's, <laughs> and I, I mean, so if you, if you tighten it up too much, then, yeah, so we have to find our place in the middle of that. So I think, I, I actually think it's, it's fine to, to give kids absolute, so there are 26 people in the room. 26 things have gone up in the first week. Um, I, by things, I mean all those modalities that I just said. And you get to choose, you know, three that you want to respond to. Um, and some kids might not get response, and we can just kind of deal with that. That's how I feel. But yeah. I mean, having you know, mercy response. <laughs> yeah, you know, with, with the provision that you saw that this kid is really interested in this thing and, and this girl over here wrote about it and he missed it, and you say, did you see what she said? <laughs> you know, so there are ways right. to connect without it being totally false, I think. Um, yeah, and, and within all of that, I think, and, and again, um, writing project groups, people meeting together, um, and talking about their work as they're as they're making it. Um, so, and can you talk I, about can you talk about how how this um, integrates into BronxNet? Yeah. Um, so so BronxNet is going to be working with a few students um, as interns uh, after our program, and those students are going to work on telling this telling the story in uh, of the writing project and what we're doing um, at Youth Voices in like two to three minute spots. Um, and then helping to produce 15 minute, um, or 12 to 15 minute, I'm not sure, but um, lengthier uh, shows that will air on BronxNet um, sharing the work that we're doing. So like um, both the process and the product, um, you know, with, um, and I think that's, I think that's pretty much it, right? Paul, and we're still kind of working with them on what's the story that we're telling or and, you know, what our threads are. Um, so what, all of this work tonight is helpful for us to start to get our heads together. Mm -hmm. And where are your kids coming from? <laughs> um, all, they, over? all over? We are, in, we are in the process of calling them um, uh, today and tomorrow um, and, so, and, and making sure. Yeah, they're coming from all over. We... we uh, do have given a preference to Bronx kids, um, but uh, there some claim they're going to come from Staten Island and oh. Flushing, and we'll see. But yeah, <laughs> New York City um, is is right. sort of our limit. But, yeah. um, 
So, so there's that. I, you know, I'm, I don't know. So, oh, so here's here's the point, and and I, I, I hope this more general talk is okay, Christy. We can try to get more specific in a second. Oh no, I don't. It's okay. Okay, okay good. I'm um, tired. Whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Fair uh, so I so. What I realized as I was talking, and um, is that uh, I think a kind of um, way of going in, in in writing project summers is that you there's something that helps you generate writing, right? And then there's um, an experience with a group where you're bringing something you've generated, and you're getting. Um, Supportive, but not necessarily always positive, you know, comments from other people um, about that work, and then that helps you cr continue to create and build. Um, and I think what we've learned over time on Youth Voices is that we can use Youth Voices as a as a similar kind of tool, so that you're we we want to encourage people to be publishing. Um, partial work, right? Unfinished work, um, and and getting and getting comments as they're as they're building towards something. Um, so that and that's how conversation comes into it. So the conversation becomes part of your thinking through the process. Um, I really, so, I yeah, I really right. like that idea, and like you know, I have all of those. <laughs> protocols and uh, ways of working from the project in my brain, and it's kind of how mm -hmm. I run my classroom in, in a lot of ways, even if it's not explicit, but that just that ha having space for feedback um, throughout your process, but, you know, some, some people don't, don't always work well that way, but, but, like, teaching what the process is and giving them that option and giving them the autonomy to do it when they need it. Um, mm -hmm. Because we all have a different process, you know. Mm. Um, so, but I, but I like making them do it so they can experience it and just to then decide: Do I like to get feedback while I'm working? Um, that's mm -hmm. one thing. So maybe that's something to think about: is like having that as an option as they're working, or if they prefer to wait until they've got something more concrete and then to do it. But, but that, like, you know, as a, going into their year next year, that's just something helpful to know about themselves as a learner, anyway. Um. Um, the, the way I do it in art is I take the, um, you know, let's say they get to a certain point one day and then they work on it a little more the next day and then they work on it more the next day. I take all three images, I take like a, a photo of it and then I put them together as an animated GIF so you can see it grow each time and then it just kind of loops like a little vine thing. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I was and doing that. we can that do that in docs too with writing. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, there's that, you know, but, um, you know, I'm all about, I'm all about documenting, you know, everything that happened, like, that day, mm -hmm. um, to look at it, because, you know, sometimes the pace is important, you know, to talk about with a student and get them to realize, you know, we have that in our school so much, like, you know, these, this guy did this much, this guy did this much, and what about you, you know, and then it's like, wah, wah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, it, it it's it's worth noting, you know, for kids, part of their development is is um, monitoring themselves, you know, and self directed learning isn't just doing what you want to do; it's also, you know, uh, you know, controlling yourself and doing, you know, like living up to the things that you said you can do in the in the beginning of the period or at the beginning of the course, you know. Right. So, and that's the point I was trying to make earlier, and I think it's really important in, as we start. So, out of this tonight, I think we could actually figure out what a day might look like, believe it or not. And, and Jake, the, the, there, I think I think we are doing an online course too, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we just yeah. happen to have the advantage of having kids there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to say it. Well, you know, kids go home, so, you know, when, no. when, they're, when they're at home, they could do other things, and, uh, you know, 
sometimes some you know sometimes kids waste their whole evenings doing Facebook and YouTube and, and whatever they do but um you know to know that they could log in if they wanted to get ahead of their stuff or catch up or you know whatever but specifically what I mean is that it, I, I I mean when I what I like thinking about is that we are actually is to treat this like an online course, but where coaches help you understand how to do an online course that it, like kids don't necessarily know how to do that. So yeah, yeah I mean, so the, yeah, the interactions in the classroom are really important, but they go toward you know understanding how to get your answers from the internet and how to publish and and. You know, work on the internet. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, it's it, it's it's definitely good. Online courses, treating it like an online course is great for for the pace. You know, because everybody can like come and go, miss and yeah. come right back in. Yeah. And then also, you know, you document, you know, what was done in that time period. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so so then so then the other idea that was bubbling earlier and I forgot, but I think it's really kind of important is Monica Hardy's notion of her vision, right, this grand vision of um, what a day would look like if kids were really free to do what they wanted to do, um, and they would spend. I, I, I'll get her times wrong here, but let me say they would spend. Three, three to five minutes doing detox. She's the, she's the queen of detox, um, and which is talking to yourself about your you know what's important to you, what's going on with you, and and you would do that on a daily basis. And I and I think and I'll break the let me just say the rest of it. Um, then you would kind of look for mentors or or collaborators or people you want to work with that day. So that's another half hour, and then you would have. You know, 23 more hours to do your work, right? <laughs> to do whatever you needed to do, and um, I don't. So, to so what? And what feels important to me in that is the freedom at the end, but it also feels important that we give students time to really find out what they care about and really, you know, delve into that. Um, well, I, Jake, I like Jake watches me struggle with this every day, so I'm not. Uh, it's like I haven't figured it out. But in the summertime, it goes better. But go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I like the ritual of that. Um, mm -hmm. Like you know, the idea that setting it's so free, but it's still a ritual. It's setting you up for the day. Um, and I think that's why I, I want to just let kids go and do whatever. But there has to be some. We're in a. We are in a community. We are together. There has to be some rituals, even if they're very, very general. So mm -hmm. I like some. I like the idea of something like that. Even just prompting them. Uh, yeah, I, I see the. I see the model of um, the way Paul does uh, every day the Hamago detox and then. You know, we get to get into all kinds of different things at different times with different kids and different paces. Um, so I mean, you know, I definitely see a benefit to it. It's it's been hard for Paul to keep, you know, um, going in our school. Um, but but you know, he's 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 got he's gotten to the end. You know, <laughs> uh, and um, you know, and well, kids, you know what, you know what, one of the things, the just eventuality. to say. One of the things that Monica does is, um, you know, she does most of her detox on video. So it is actually talking to the screen mm -hmm. about yourself. Um, and oh, so, great. you know, as part of the struggle that we deal with is that that's hard for us to do, given our setup and YouTube block and everything. But we won't have those blocks at Lehman. Um, and we also have kids that are, that are very like hot and cold on being on camera. Sometimes they want to do it, sometimes they don't, and then all of a sudden they want to delete everything. So, you know. But if we, if we bring back those modalities of reading and writing, or whatever, you know, video, audio, image, code, and say, you know, we want you to do this, talking to yourself about who you are, what's what's important to you, what are your dreams, what's you know, what are your questions, what are your curiosities. Um, but you can use any of the modalities to do that. Um, I think that's interesting. There, and, and I think there's also an interesting privacy issue because, yeah, 
we can talk about that. But but we we've, well, we've made those pretty public in the past. I mean that that's the great thing about giving the kid the camera, and so you know you're seeing it from their point of view. You don't actually see them. You know you might or see. Or they can use the webcam. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you might see everybody else. You know, or you might see the teacher asking them questions, but you just hear their voice. You know, and um. You know, if that makes the kid more comfortable with doing video, then then great. You know, because you're still hearing them and you're getting all their thoughts, and then they could hear that back and hear themselves. All right, we should um, kind of finish up here. I <laughs> sorry. Get late. What? It's getting a little late, but um, we have a few minutes if you don't mind. Just till till ten o'clock. Um, ten o'clock Eastern time. Here. The uh. So, Christy, what are you thinking at this point? Is there any way to to, to <laughs> put that on paper, what we've talked about here tonight? Is it, is well, I started that, thinking about it? that, and then I realized I can just watch this again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I, I used my resources. Um, <laughs> but, um, but will I, you have the time I, to? Um, <laughs> no, I, I might just while I'm like, so, brainstorming at some point. But uh, go ahead. So I, my my suggestion is to could we in three minutes here say what the day looks like, like what we the rituals look like. We could try. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't know. And Jake, do, how do you how do you help on an online in an online course? How do you help kids structure their time? Yeah, that's. Um, I mean, that's interesting because you know you're you're on the other end, and they either get it done or they don't. <laughs> and you know, uh, our, the kids in our school sometimes need a lot of hand holding just to do the you know the simplest things. Um, so yeah, you know, I I would I would try to get them used to um, meeting at a certain time or dropping in, so to speak. I'm hoping that when we have um, the in class. Sessions, which is going to be from 8:30 to 12:30 Monday through Thursday, that we might be able to have an open hangout, you know, and have kids just come in and and start to see what it's like just to peer in, you know, at the physical room. Like this is what you're missing in summer school. Um, well, but, we're just okay. up, we're just up to block, but we might be able to do that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and and um, you know, and, and kids, you know, seeing other kids doing stuff and realizing that the clock is ticking, we're not getting any younger here, right? And um, you know, maybe that'll motivate them. But you know, it's hard. I mean, you have to number one, you know, try to lock them into some goals early on, and then encourage them to make make those goals. You could try to reach out to parents at some point, but you know, sometimes it's counterproductive in our school. <laughs> um, and um, you know, and then you know, if they don't do it, then you know, they you, they might learn from that experience. Like, wow, you know, we offered you this opportunity, and you know, you didn't you didn't take it that time, but you know, maybe you'll maybe you'll start it now because these things can go any time, you know, as long as it's happening outside of school time. You know, why not just you know do it later or you know do it when you're ready. Mm -hmm. So, and again, yeah. I do think it is like you said, having them set goals early. I do think it is about having like some some uh, quick things that they're doing early on that are small, and that and then like practicing some of the the rituals and routines together in a little bit of a tighter way the first day, and then like once they're feeling comfortable, um, giving them more freedom as we go. I don't know. It, it seems like you did that a little bit last year as well. Um, so. Having having more structure in the in the beginning, but at your school, you guys do quite a lot of work with goal setting with kids, don't you? Me? Isn't that important? Um, at at twelves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. In terms of the skills, and uh, I'm just thinking, I was just preparing something to share about how we have students reflect on uh, on their outcomes mm -hmm. and their mastery based grades. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we all, that's kind of what we do. <laughs> um, but I also feel really strongly about having it all planned out really well on our end um, so that we have stuff for them to do in terms of, and places for them to go. Um, and I don't mean like really strict assignments, still having choice, but just like here are five awesome things that we thought of or whatever it is, um, and we're going to share one of them by the end of the day, go. 
Yeah. Well, you know, I, and I told I told you earlier um, that I was going to have you talk more, but um, I didn't um, about the six word. Um, Memoir, which you call it, or story about myself? Yes, yeah, okay. six-word memoir. Um, I definitely did not make this up. <laughs> right. um, well, in, fact, in fact, I think I could find five different versions of that assignment. Oh, so, uh, so oh here's yeah. what I would, here's On my website, I have the whole like um, of the whole unit. So that's asynchronous. The kids go on. They go through the different phases of the process. Um, and there's tons of models on there from other schools, from Smith Magazine, et cetera. Didn't um didn't Mad Magazine a long time ago have something called extremely extremely short cliff notes on, and there was like Moby Dick and Tales oh yeah I know what you're talking about yeah it was like five words on a page there we go mm -hmm. but um but the the visual is very important in this in yeah. the way you do it right I mean yeah yeah, yeah the visual so, is a part of the story we're way out of time um I, I noticed but um as I look but, but they could create their six word memoir by the end of the first day. Right, but six words is very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of tough, but we have enough time that they yeah um, they could mess with that yeah yeah that's what we, we yeah, so we should absolutely do it. but but the but the point I was trying to make is that um and and certainly not on the first day, but it seems to me like it, like we want to introduce them to and if you go back a couple shows or maybe even a month ago now. We talked about make banks or assessment banks. Um, so, and, and there are some rich ones that the uh, people in the CL MOOC with the National Writing Project are, are creating. And um, um, Alan Levine has created uh, with DL106, um, if I have the right letters there. But, um, and, and we have we have missions, right? So I would love for like you to pull off that whole unit and get it into a mission, mm -hmm. because so that it gets shared with other teachers and, and and other people, but also because then students might have their version of that mission that they want to put up. So that's where things get rich when they start adding to the assignments themselves, and I really believe they can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so enough said. Uh, lots of ideas here tonight, <laughs> yeah, but I'll let you have a, a, a final thought here. Jake, do you want to go first? Um, well, you know, what do we have, like six days of school left, five days of school? Um, you but, you know, you know this year, as our principal keeps saying, no, we end August 12th. And, right, uh, we, we keep we on going. On July 1st, and well, we just all right, going. We get it. We get anyway, it never weekend. mind, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Let uh, Jake talk. Go, go Jake. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, it, it's it's that. It's that we are. We, you know, we're coming so fast up onto our um, summer offerings, and I I did mention, you know, even when I first took this job, that I wanted to launch online, um, you know, starting in in the summer. So here we are, um, and I really I'm really looking forward to getting it off the ground. Um, you know, even if it's just a beta, and we just have a couple of kids. Um, but uh, you know, building the structure, and then, you know, the idea that I'm hoping, you know, long term is that we can offer it to the kids in our school, and and that kids in other schools can take it too, where they get assessed by their teachers in their home school. You know, they just see that the work that they've done offline, and then they can, they can like get credit reclamation that way, in the, at their, you know, from their own advisors. Badges, big, but never mind. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I have. I'm. I'm thinking. You're tired a lot of, too. Thank you for putting up oh, yes. this tonight. Oh uh, yes. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just. You know, I proctored for three hours today, so my brain died a little bit. Um, <laughs> I um, I'm thinking about a lot actually in terms of uh, the story that we tell and how we can give them as much autonomy in that as possible, but like. So a balance between providing some stuff for them and giving them freedom and making sure, you know, so I'm, I'm really like playing with that and I'm, I know some really amazing ideas are going to pop out in like two days. Um, but that's just going to marinate in there for a second. Um, and I'm going to, I'm, Paul, I would like to look again at all of the stuff that you have up from last year now that we've had mm -hmm. this conversation just to kind of start looking at what the structures were. So, um, so yeah, I feel good. I'm glad that we talked tonight. Thanks for having me on the air. 
Thank you. <laughs> and I hope this was valuable to some other people too. But who cares? It was nice talking. To you. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean who cares. But anyway, um, as I said at the beginning, we've been doing this for uh, several years now. Um, I, uh, it was. Uh, this was one of the shows, and there are a couple of others still going on um, over at edtechtalk.com slash um, edtechtalk.com, which is a channel of World Bridges Network that was started by Jeff Lebo and David Cormier, Dave Cormier. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you, Christine. Okay. Thank you, Jake. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you, Jake. Bye. Nice to meet you. Take care.